Good morning, saints. Welcome all saints to all these All Saints Sunday. And probably you were expecting the other greeting, you know. But I, when I look at you, flawed uh, with uh, imperfections, human beings, that's all we are here. I look at you and I see saints, those who reflect God's image each and every day at work, at the marketplace, at the train station, at the office, in school, during break, teaching, counseling, supporting someone, preparing a meal. When I see you, I see the saints doing God's work with effort, with sacrifice. And today we come to celebrate not only those who have died, those who we don't, we don't have anymore with us, but also the living saints. We have the church uh, gather at its best. The, the church eternal, the church triumphant, the church here living among us. Yes, today we are very keenly aware of, the, of those who have gone before us. We bring grief, sadness, a heavy load. But because Jesus resurrected and is living among us through the presence of the Holy Spirit, we can mourn in hope because we know that this is not all there is and yes we miss those who made an impact on us who touched us deeply but we are assured of resurrection life today and of eternal life with our maker and those uh, we love Thank you for being here this morning, uh, and today we have uh, Pastor, uh, can I pronounce your name? Uh, Kim, Pastor Kim, but his name is Doyoung, right, Kim? And um, he's getting ready for an appointment in the Wisconsin uh, Annual Conference. And it's been a pleasure to have him with us, and today uh, I feel an honor to invite him to uh, celebrate this day uh, with, with me, with you, with us all together. So welcome. It's good to have you here with us. And I invite Jean, uh, because she has very good news to share. You know, this week was intense. <laughs> it was a great week. But it was a great week because despite of what we've been through, through these 19 months, many of you sought to find community and solidarity with each other by doing something, by coming to crafts, by getting together uh, in spite of the pandemic and working at you, what, what brought you together to share stories, to share life but also to create beautiful things, which blessed us yesterday as we had our annual bazaar after two years. And so, Jean, please share with us. My heart, my heart is very full of gratitude for all that happened yesterday. We had some outstanding help from our Boy Scout troop. They had everything set up for us when we came in on Wednesday, all the tables and everything, um, taking things down yesterday. The scouts were here during the day to help us, but then they helped take down. Uh, Martha Walker and a whole crew came, and once again, the, the bizarre cleanup took only about an hour because we had so many people, so many men from the church to put down the tables, which we really appreciated. It's, it's just been so much, and thanks to the support and help of all of you, We've already made a little over $10,000. 
and we, because we're not using that much, we did leave things pretty spread out back in the fellowship hall and in rooms five and six. Please come after church and shop because we do have things available. Thank you. Thank you. And um, as, as I said, uh, welcome all saints. I invite you now to, to bow our heads in prayer. <clears throat> Loving and gracious God, you have blessed us with saints all of our lives. Those who put up with us and those who prepare us for discipleship, those who have touched us with their compassion, and those who illumine the way for us through the valleys and over the hills, down the dusty streets of every village, saints travel with you. Jesus, those who impetuously chased after you, and those who, whose feet long to turn back, those who jostle with your attend for your attention and and those who made sure little children, little children were able to meet you. We give you thanks for all these saints. And as you surround us with saints living and the dead in this great communion that we have today, even when we don't recognize many of them because of our masks or much less appreciate them, uh, be with us. Be with us and help us to remember and to celebrate who we are and whose we are. And for all the saints of every age, especially those we will remember today, we give you our gratitude and praise. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand for the singing of the opening hymn. Please be seated. which bind us to sin, not to God. But our God has promised us new hope, new life, fresh mercy, if we will but confess. 
I invite you to join me as we pray together and sing. Lord, we have called ourselves the resurrections of people. We have filled our minds with evil thoughts that lead to destructive deeds. Give us and restore us, O Lord. Hear our prayers and lead us to become what you intend for us to be. Amen. Words of forgiveness and pardon. Lift up your head. Sins of God, your sin is gone, your former life has passed, your new life in Christ has begun. Thus, in the name of Jesus, I declare to you that your sins are forgiven. As we continue with our worship, uh, we, we do it through, also through the prayers of joys and concerns uh, that uh, we bring today uh, to share with everyone. And I will invite you to, to share your joys and concerns. And um, as you receive the microphone, uh, make sure you put it in front of you so we can hear you well. And, but also state your, your name and you can quickly share uh, your joy and concern. Uh, here in the front in, and in the back here. Pete, over here. Hi, I'm Karen Bailey and I'm asking for prayers for my son Brian. He's having uh, problems, job things, he's looking for a new job. And then suddenly Friday, he had a cat, he had some medical issues, he, he was tending to some thyroid things and some digestive things. And the cat suddenly passed away on Friday. And he's totally devastated. This was his cat. He picked his cat out from the shelter. So this is his pet from the get-go. So he's having a very hard time. So please keep him in your prayers. Amen. I'm Mary Ann Lucas. And um, I have a joy uh, <laughs> on my mind. Last weekend I wasn't here. And uh, our daughter was able to go with us, which was a blessing also for my older sister, Joanne's celebration of life up in Two Harbors, Minnesota. It really was a celebration. Um, you know, I had mixed feelings about it in a way, at, you know, heading for that, but it turned out to be a true celebration. She had eight children. She still, there's still eight children there. They're all grown up. They all are professional, healthy people. Uh, and uh, they had a short uh, celebration of life in, the ch in her small church that she was a member of for 60 years. Um, that was one of the highlights, of course. Her older daughter, the oldest daughter, Ivy, gave the eulogy, and uh, it was very meaningful. Then the other part that was just really something was uh, we, uh, my sister lived on uh, Lake Superior, right on the lake, up in Two Harbors, and uh, we had the scattering of the ashes in the afternoon. And uh, this was a whole family, you know, a big family, plus, you know, <laughs> not just those, but you know, it was a huge family, it was like 30, what did he say? About 38 people were all gathered. And uh, I, I don't want to go on to describe it, but it just was so meaningful. I just wanted to let you know. Thank you. Thank you. Well, my name is Sonia Lecce. Uh, we had one of the elder members of our family who's been here for you know about 50 years in the Glendale Heights area um, pass away. 
uh, this past week. So pr prayers for the Guzman family. What's the name of the family? Joyce. Joyce? Joyce. Good morning. Uh, my name is Cindy Sheely, and I'm not one of the women who worked, you know, this last year or last week um, on the Women's Bazaar. I'm just one of many who showed up for a couple hours to help out yesterday. And uh, since I was a cashier, we got to see people as they were leaving, obviously. And I heard countless times how happy people were that we were having our bazaar again this year, that they missed it so much last year and it just felt like they were getting out and doing something normal. And then to add on to Jean's comment about the scouts, there were these young women and, you know, and boys that were just dying to help people and carry things out to the car and offering you know, assistance. They were just so wonderful. And this one young man said to his buddy, he said, helping people is really fun, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so the woman they were helping wanted to make a donation to the scout and said, and the boy said, we have to give this money to Mr. So-and-so. You know, they were really uh, careful about how they handled that money that, that, that she had handed on to them. But it was just such a wonderful day and everyone was, from the public, from our church and the surrounding churches, really appreciated having our bazaar to come to again. So thank you, ladies. Hi, I'm Drew McDougal and prayers for my grandma because my grandpa just died um, on Friday. Last Friday. So I'll just press for my grandma. Thank you for sharing with us. We know that uh, you already had the funeral for your grandma uh, and your dad. And uh, we are praying for you and we hope that uh, in this new journey that you have, we will ha you will sense our prayers and our care for you. Hi, Rod Parker. Uh, I have a toy. Mark Mixter, who's my cousin's husband, was diagnosed with terminal brain cancer and given 33 months to live. That's the optimum. Earlier this week, we learned that he's cancer free. <laughs> prayers, prayers do work. He has some more. I understand he has more therapy to go to, but my God, thank you for it. Amen. Great news. Praise be to God for that. Amen. Uh, my name is Art Hawksett, and uh, I have a joy, but I think it's a joy for the whole church. I remember, boy, do I remember, uh, beginning of April 2020, when we came back into the church live and we're limited to 50 people in the service. I remember what 50 people looks like in this sanctuary. And today we are so blessed, because I guarantee you we got over twice that many people in here today. We have some people we haven't seen in a while and it's wonderful to see them, but to show you how God works, we also have faces out there that are new to this church during the pandemic. Now I know you're all wearing masks, but my father was Superman and I can see through everything. <laughs> but truly, it's just wonderful to see the congregation we have today, the way we're coming back. We work so hard to succeed. And it is wonderful to see all the new faces that we have as part of our Savior's church family. and I have a joy. Uh, our granddaughter Emma is part of the Vernon Hills High School cross country team and they placed third in the state tournament in Peoria yesterday. <laughs> Thank you. Give her our regards. Um, I have a, a joy on when I talk about footsteps. Uh, we lost a great general this week. And so when we think about veterans this week, think about Colin Powell. 
Not only was he a great serviceman, but he was a man of faith. My father was a veteran. So when I think about Colin Powell, such a leader, such a man of faith, but more important, a man who loved this country. Amen. Amen. I invite you to bow our heads now in prayer. Yes, our Lord, we come here to give you thanks for your presence in our lives, for bringing us together this morning. All the saints to celebrate all the saints in the life of the church. We know, Lord, that we don't have to die or go to heaven to be a saint because we're all saints of the living God. But certainly we're keenly aware of those who have gone to meet you, Lord. And we pray for those who, who now are in your presence. We pray for the McDougall family as they mourn, as they remember. Give them peace, strength, presence, and company to, to walk again, uh, knowing that uh, they have memories of their grandfather and father that will help them to sustain during this difficult time, but also the presence of family and friends and church. May they sense our care, our support, our sympathy. And Lord, we pray for, for those who are not doing very well during this time, uh, going through surgery, uh, those who have uh, faced uh, cancer, and but also for the good news of those who are battling cancer and are victorious because it is in remission or they have recovered. We, are, we give you thanks for all who provide for, for people who are in hospitals, day in and day out, even sacrificing their own uh, time, even lives to keep us safe and secure. We pray, O oh Lord, for, for those who have gone uh, also uh, to serve in so many places uh, and in so many ways that uh, become the saints just by doing menial things like changing diapers, serving food to, to, uh, to those who need it, or just working, uh, volunteering in so many places. Those are the saints that give us a good example that you are in our midst, that you are with us each and every day. And Lord, we thank you for the miracles that happen among us, for those who now are, have a new lease on life, that can see things in a different way because they have been cured or because they have received good news of work or, or things are improving in their lives despite of this pandemic. We give you thanks, O oh Lord, for what happened here last week but took place uh, during a whole 19 months to come to a place where we saw joy and, and community. Everything in order to be of help a mission to many places. Thank you for the hands that helped, for those who found that it was fun to help people, for the young uh, lives that were impacted by it, by sensing, by seeing the example of, of what a community is, of love and faith. We thank you for coming back to church uh, and for uh, getting more courageous each and every day as we face daily lives. And Lord, we thank you for, for those who have served this country, uh, especially for uh, General Powell. And the question is, can we afford to have more Colin Powells in our current situation? And Lord, I hope that the answer is yes. 
Thank you for those who have shown us a different reality, a different way of doing things with kindness, with care. Walk with us, Lord, during this day and during this week. Help us to fully believe that uh, your Holy Spirit guides us, but also that in the midst of, of death, you provide for us life. And provide for us life as saints to live it fully each and every day. Not just remembering the past, but looking into that future that you have promised for us. Lord, receive our prayers, the prayers we have not uttered, the prayers that are deep in our recesses of our minds, of our hearts. Take care of our needs. Provide for us strength, courage, truth, but also a new vision for how to face each and every day. All this we pray in your name. Amen. And as we come together uh, to worship our God, we bring our, our gifts. Uh, we come to this time of giving, of, of, uh, of bearing good fruit, of sharing uh, the things we, we have. And we are not forced to do that, but we do it out of love. And uh, I invite you now to, to share. Uh, of your gifts, your talents, to reconsecrate yourself to God's work. And I invite the ushers to receive our gifts and offerings and ourselves.
Dear brethren, please join prayer dedication. As God saints in this time and place, may the gift we offer and the lives we lead reveal the one for whom we have waited and who invites us to spread grace over all the world. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. from John 11, verses 17 through 45. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Jesus heard that Mary was coming, she went and met him. But Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, 
I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here and is calling you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who have opened the eyes of the blind man also kept this man from dying? Then Jesus deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and his feet bound with linen strips, and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him, and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Sorry, you were waiting for the response to the word. Uh, just skipped it. We have always, uh, and especially me, I have always loved uh, All Saints Day, All Saints Sunday in, the, in our case. Only it feels different at 58 than it did at 33, <laughs> when I first was called to lead God's people on this day. And for those saints I, I have, whom I have known and loved and said goodbye to, you know, they are growing, growing in numbers. Both those who, who have shaped me in powerful ways from the start and those who have been called to walk alongside in recent years. And simply put, the losses are piling on. And the grief is more complicated, more textured than it was when I first began. And today is the day when we name and remember all those saints that we have loved and lost during the past years, such as uh, Claire Slade, Patrick Blason, Jolene June Barton, Mike <laughs> Nolan, Christine Brinas, Kathleen Abbott, Ray Walters, and those brothers and sisters that, that you knew. We also remember the 754,000 brothers and sisters killed by COVID just in the States, and the 5.04 million worldwide. Many of them died not even being remembered or cared for in isolation.
So I think it is fitting today to remember. Today is also a day to celebrate and remember those saints who are living, you know, now. You, I mean, Saint you, you know, Saint Joel, Saint Durrell, Saint Mary, Saint Paula, you know, Saint Gary, Saint, uh, you put your name on it, you know. Because it, uh, as, I, as I wrote before, uh, the New Testament, the word saint is used only to refer, is, is, is used only to refer to all Christians. As in Paul, when he writes, uh, Paul, the apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus. And we know where Ephesus had a lot of problems there, but he calls them saints, Ephesians 1.1. Because the word saint is never used to refer to the best, most virtuous, uh, and most faithful Christians. You know, as in St. Paul, or St. John, or St. Peter. Uh, today we're not talking about a super Christian hall of fame. Because that is not biblical. Right? So what is the saint then? A saint is one who has been sanctified, which means to be made holy by baptism into the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. To be a saint is to embody God's way of life that sets us apart, not for the sake of proving ourselves to be better, not for the sake of one-upmanship, not for the sake of power, but for the sake of example, of model, of witness. Why? So that those who look at us, those who observe how we choose to live and be in the world, will catch a glimpse of the sanctity of God's love, the holiness of God and that a life of sainthood does not mean perfection or having your own feast day. So that there can be another way of being in the world besides self-service, self-aggrandizement, autonomy, and narcissism. A saint, in simple words, is a Christian and a Christian is a saint. One who has been made holy by Christ. Of course, as we gather here today on this All Saints Sunday, you know, I, I recognize that it's a bittersweet day for many of us because we still grieve the losses we feel. We also, but we also give thanks for both. You know, both the lives of our loved ones led and for the promises of resurrection life they now enjoy. And yes, it is true. It is true. In the midst of life, we are in death. But All Saints reminds us of a deeper truth. In the midst of death, we are promised life resurrection life. In a commentary uh, on this passage done by Scott Hosey, uh, Jose, uh, who is a theologian uh, that I follow, a uh, great, great friend of mine, I mean, because I read him. Uh, there is a, a short story uh, in which the, the writer uh, Annie Diller talks about a family who is sadly gather at a grave to commit a loved one's body to the earth. And at one point, the minister intones the familiar words from uh, 1 Corinthians 15. Where, O death, is thy sting? And upon hearing that, one of the family members looks up. He scans the sorrowful faces of his family and sees all around him, row upon row of, of headstones in the cemetery, 
And then he thinks to himself, where all death is thy sting? Why is just about everywhere, seeing as you ask? It's just about everywhere, seeing as you ask. Indeed, it is. And in this pandemic time, as worldwide death tolls get updated on the hour, we hardly need much reminding of all this. But it's not just this strange time of pandemic. Death, death is not only seen in big natural disasters because of tornadoes or earthquakes or fires or pandemics but it also can be seen in the everyday. Because you never open the newspaper's obituary column only to see the word none. It's everywhere in John 11 too. And not just in the obvious place where Lazarus you know, was buried. There is a whiff of death when John reminds us in verse 2 that Mary anointed Jesus with perfume. Well, that actually doesn't happen here. It's going to happen in the next chapter. And when it does, Jesus makes clear that this is a burial anointing for his body. But nowhere is the choking reality of death on better display here than in what Jesus encounters once he at long last, you know, arrives in Bethany. And you could hear the sound of the crying, you know, a long ways off. Because sorrow creates its own kind of presence, doesn't it? And we felt it probably as pastors many times when walking into that you know, hospital room or that living room, that funeral parlor. Grief is palpable and engulfing. So we can understand Jesus' reaction to the death of Lazarus. Jesus weeps because grief takes hold of God and breaks him down. In our antiseptic way, you know, we imagine Jesus' face, you know, we imagine a single tear running down his face. But the, the, the passage here, the Greek suggests that Jesus bursts into tears that shake his body. And within that Greek word for shudders with sadness, there is, a, there is a connotation of anger, that Jesus was angry about something, and that the scholars and the commentaries ponder what Jesus was angry about. But I know, I know why, I know, I know what Jesus was angry about. He was angry that Lazarus died too soon, too young, that it all hurt inside. I knew, I knew those feelings when my good friend Michael died too young and, and too soon. And you know that too. I was mad, really mad inside. And as I said, you know those feelings from your own experiences as well. But here's the thing. When Jesus weeps, he legitimizes human grief. His brokenness in the face of Mary's sorrow negates all forms of Christian triumphalism that leave no room for lament. Yes, resurrection, yes, resurrection is around the corner, but in this story, 
The promise of joy doesn't cancel out the essential work of grief. When Jesus Christ, he assures Mary not only that her beloved brother is, is worth crying for, but also that she is worth crying with. And through his tears, Jesus calls all of us into the holy vocation of empathy. When Jesus Christ he honors the complexity of our gains and losses, our sorrows and joys. You know, raising Lazarus would not bring back the past. It would not cancel out the pain of his final illness, the memory of saying goodbye to a life he loved, or the gaping absence his sisters felt when he died. Whatever joys awaited his family in the future would be, you know, layered joys. Joys shaped by sorrows and fears and losses. They just endured. Jesus' tears honor the reality of human change. He grieves because things will never be the same again. And when Jesus weeps, he acknowledges his own mortality. In John's Gospel, the raising of Lazarus, you know, is the precipitating event that leads to Jesus' own arrest and crucifixion. And when word spreads about the miracle in Bethany, the authorities decide that enough is enough. You know, Jesus must be stopped. So essentially, Jesus trades his life for his friends. And given this fact, I imagine that Jesus' tears are expression of grief also over his own impending death. He knows that the end is imminent. He knows that his time with his friends is almost over. He knows that it's nearly time to say goodbye, you know, to the lakes, to the skies, to the hills, to the stars he loves. And in crying, he asserts powerfully that it is okay to yearn for life. It's okay to feel a sense of roughness and injustice in the face of death. It's okay to mourn the loss of vitality, of intimacy, of longevity. It's okay to love and cherish the gift of life here and now. And finally, when Jesus weeps, he shows us that sorrow is a powerful catalyst for change. In the story of Lazarus, it is shared lament that leads to transformation. It's because Jesus experiences the devastation of death that he recognizes the immediate need to restore life. It is his sharing that leads to resurrection. And perhaps Jesus' tears can provoke us in similar ways. You know, what, what breaks our hearts? What splits us open in sorrow? Can we work for transformation in our places of devastation? Can our sorrow lead us to justice? Folks, this, this Sunday we gather to honor all saints. And we take time to remember, to mourn, and to celebrate those who have gone before us. And I hope that Jesus' tears can be our guide. I hope this honest expression of sorrow will give us the permission we need not only to do the work of grief and healing, but also 
to move with powerful compassion in a world that sorely needs our empathy and love. Yes, we are in death, but we serve, serve a God who calls us to life. Our journey is not to the grave, but through it. The Lord who weeps, you know, is also the Lord who resurrects. So we mourn in hope because we will not remain in the grave stinky and broken, but we will be made whole and found forever with the Lamb and all the faithful departed. And so, dear friends, today, once again, historically, we as a church come to confess a belief in the communion of saints, which includes not only all living believers, but also those who have gone before us. And when we celebrate Holy Communion, we experience the communion of saints, feasting with believers past, present, and future. And the author of Hebrews 12 reminds us that these saints, a great cloud of witnesses, surrounds us and cheers us on. And today, on the first Sunday in November, we publicly remember and honor those who have passed away and call the names of those we lost this past year, honoring the impact of their lives had had on us. We will put the names on the screen, and I invite you, when you see the name, uh, if you would like, if there is no family of that person here, if you would like to witness to their love and care, to who they were, just come, come up to the front pick up this lighter, light it, and light the candle in honor of their name, All right? And the first name is Claire Slay, May 14, 2021. Patrick Blason, June 2021. Jolene June Barton, July 23, 2021. Mike Nolan, August 23, 2021. Christine Brinas, August 13, 2021.
Kathleen L., September 27, 2021. Ray Walters, October 23, 2020. And for the 754,000 brothers and sisters in the USA, and 5.04 million brothers and sisters worldwide, And I invite you now to say the name of a loved one you would like to remember here, to say it out loud, and I will light a candle for them. Thank you. And now I invite you to uh, look at your screens as we have uh, the communion liturgy. You also have them in your hymnals on page 13. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending home. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. Deliver us from slavery to sin and death, and make with us new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciple and said, Take it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciple and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. Pour out for you and for many for forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it, 
in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your own mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen. For our your Holy Spirit and us gather here and on these gifts of bread and wine make them be for us the body and blood of Christ redeemed by his blood By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ given for you. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to Take your cup with the wafer on top. Open the, there's a little tab there. If you can find it, we will give you three points for that. <laughs> and if you can open it without spilling anything, three more points. The body of Christ given for, for you and for me in forgiveness of our sins. Then you continue to open the cup. Once you have it open, drink it. The blood of Christ given for you and for me in the forgiveness of our sins. Amen. invite you to stand for the for this beautiful hymn that reminds us of the promises of God
Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, for all the saints who ever worship you, whether in simple churches or cathedrals, whether wooden churches or crumbling cement meeting houses, where your name was lifted and adored. We give thanks to God for hands lifted in praise, manicure hands and hands stained with grease or soil, strong hands on those gnarled with age, holy hands used as wave offerings across the land. We thank you, God, for hardworking saints, whether hard-hatted or steel-booted, head-racked or aproned, blue-colored or three-piece suited. They left their mark on the earth for you, for us, for our children to come. Thank you, God, for the tremendous sacrifices made by those who have gone before us. Bless the memories of your saints. And may you bless those saints who are among us walking daily, teaching us, showing us by example and by model. Help us to be like them. And may we learn how to walk wisely from their examples of faith, dedication, worship, and love. And now, as we go, send us with your blessing, the blessing that comes from the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.